Hi and welcome uh, everyone. It's me Abhishek Shrestha from Digo Vikas Institute, Kathmandu, Nepal, and I lead uh, climate justice and rethinking development program in Digo Vikas Institute. So now, should I continue? We continue. We can continue. So, I, uh, if you see climate-wise, uh, Nepal uh, have been facing severe. Uh, problem of extreme weather events like landslide, uh, flood. Recently, we had a tornado in uh, Nepal. That's very uh, unusual. Beside that, uh, there is like erratic uh, monsoon, uh, and that has uh, resulted into the uh, low, like low productivity of uh, rice, wheat, because uh, most of the farmers in Nepal they heavily dependent on. Uh, monsoon uh, rainfall we have also seen uh, we have also now observed the uh, problem of water scarcity in uh, rural part of Nepal so that's directly impacting the lives of uh, poor people uh, and if you see in context of Nepal socially women uh, goes to collect uh, the water so so now that's uh, putting much more stress is uh, in women so that has uh, resulted into less uh, social life of women uh, so that's uh, the major climate change uh, impact uh, that w we are facing and there has been uh, different uh, community-led uh, initiative uh, for the climate change adaptation and beside, there, beside that there has been intervention by uh, different uh, NGOs uh, on climate change adaptation in Nepal. Uh, government of Nepal has been working at the grassroots level uh, to so that uh, the communities that are most impacted by climate change can adapt uh, through through these changes. And talking about uh, government of Nepal, a uh, uh, few weeks back uh, they revised the climate change policy. So we have a new climate change policy. Uh, the government of Nepal has been taking uh, climate change uh, seriously. Uh, the high level uh, government. Uh, Official, uh, like government officials, like President of Nepal, attended last year uh, a COP meeting in Katowice in Poland, and this year in April uh, three to four, the Nepal government is hosting Sagarmatha dialogue. So, so that's a dialogue where uh, different international government, international expert will convene, con will be convening and discuss on the issues of uh, climate change. Uh, and and I'm, I'm happy to be here in. Uh, South Asian uh, People's Action on Climate Crisis first launch meeting in Hyderabad and, and I'm happy to meet uh, different activists, uh, researchers, independent uh, individuals uh, convening in uh, Hyderabad to discuss uh, how uh, these individuals, these people-led women can uh, solve the climate crisis and also pressure uh, our own government to do more on uh, climate change, to be more serious on climate change and put uh, pressure to uh, the glo uh, global uh, leaders, uh, head of states of many industrialized and uh, develop, uh, developed countries. Uh, and I am really looking forward for the uh, next two days to build strong uh, as they have said, rainbow, rainbow coalition to address the climate crisis, the existential crisis for the whole uh, human civilization. And and I was happy that tomorrow we are uh, joining the global climate strike uh, as a part of uh, solidar solidarity uh, that's being organized all over the world. Thank you very much. Uh, you. What are the specific? Uh, uh, particularly Himalayan uh, 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 What is the impact of the climate change on the Himalayas? Uh, Himalayas? So, uh, uh, Nepal being a mountainous country, uh, one of the major problems that uh, we have been facing in Nepal is uh, the melting of ice in Himalayas and that is resulting to the formation of glacial lakes. So that's very unusual for Nepal to have the formation of glacial lakes. So that's directly linked with the rising temperature and climate change that has resulted into the formation of glacial lake. And uh, the people in the mountain and, and the downstream people who are nearby mountain is living in threat of cloth. So that's glacial lake outburst flood because like uh, too much water has been accumulated in that lake. So so the people are living in like huge threat, like there might be flood uh, very soon. So this is all uh, because of climate change. Uh, so we need to 
uh, act uh, to make sure that all the water uh, that's uh, past uh, the safe level, uh, like which, which is in dangerous level, can be brought down into safe level so that people in the Himalayan region can live uh, safely. Uh, what are the political parties? Uh, a reaction, uh, what are the policies towards its, uh, climate change? Uh, there are communist parties there, other parties there. What is their uh, role in the climate change? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, talking about uh, political uh, parties, uh, engagement in climate change, uh, different political parties have come up with um, different manifesto on climate change. So uh, that's really welcoming hope to have uh, climate change in the political manifesto, but uh, but despite that, uh, there are lots of work to be done. Uh, what's in the political manifesto? We are looking forward for the political parties in Nepal to act on what has been uh, written in the political manifesto on uh, climate change. Beside that, uh, the government uh, is uh, doing their. Uh, good, I, I feel like they are doing uh, quite uh, good work because we came up with new climate change policy. Uh, we are working on uh, Sagarmatha climate uh, dialogue and, uh, and the high level uh, government uh, people engagement in international forum is a sign that government has taken climate change seriously and it uh, wants to, it is, it is ready to act for the climate change and, and to save the life of the people of Nepal who will be impacted by climate change. But particularly, what is the uh, next recent times Nepal faces so much of flood in recent last two years. Yes. So how the people are facing the struggle and how the government is seeing the whole situation now? And then another thing, is there any fund like thing, fund like uh, what I trying to mean is that, that intergovernmental transfers, no? Like there is like Prime Minister fund. Right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Is there any fund, I mean, is there any funds for this flood thing because uh, Mostly in Nepal also, no? every year or at least by year. So once in two years, they will be having yeah. some kind of flood. So to mitigate this flood uh, thing, do they have any funds to do that? Because finance is very important. No? To, uh, to, 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 what is it? Uh, to, to, yeah, to response the disaster. Uh, rehabilitation. Yeah. yeah, we have come up with, uh, Nepal has come up with uh, disaster uh, act as well. And beside that, uh, usually there's like prime minister fund when there is like any flood or any disaster related event. So the government provide uh, funds to the family uh, that are being hit by flood or uh, in, in context of Nepal, we had tornado. That's the first of its event where uh, 28 people died and more than 1000 people were displaced. So government provide um, them with uh, what you call the instant fund, uh, like they provided, like I think two to, uh, I forget the uh, amount actual amount, but I think it's five lakh uh, per family. So that was the initial fund that has been uh, provided by government. So usually they have a fund called uh, Prime Minister Emergency Fund. Mm -hmm. So when there is any natural calamities or any disaster, landslide, flood, or um, or so-called like tornado, so the government comes uh, forward and uh, support the people in the ground. And they have been doing that. Uh, After that, uh, like how any, any infrastructures or uh, any policies changed by the government? Uh, and then uh, how the people are reacting to the such uh, natural calamities? Yeah, so if you see, the, uh, these disasters are, have the frequency have gone higher. Earlier we used to have like flood and these kind of severe flood like in 10 years time but we are having it uh, every year mm -hmm. and the government response initially is very good they, uh, because ultimately the people need that support. Uh, government have been supporting but, uh, this, uh, but after the incident the government engagement is not quite, uh, quite satisfactory because uh, the people whose house has gone they, that needs to be rebuilt. Uh, they have like uh, loss of their land, uh, productive land that uh, that should be replaced or like they should be able to culti cultivate that. So government is uh, not so quick on that. So that is the area where government should be quick because it's all the poor people who are suffering and their livelihood are directly impacted. Their houses are totally gone. So uh, that's where we need more uh, 
uh, timely intervention from the government. Any question? Uh, you, you, you are very yeah, optimistic uh, in, in uh, leaving this uh, development. That yeah, really because, yeah, they have been doing that, but I said like they have to do because uh, it's related to their house, their property. So initially they give like okay, uh, after two three days they give some money, but it, because that's just short term fix because it has to be long term because the houses need to build because if they are growing rice or if they are growing vegetable then that land has to come back to normal. So that's where more intervention should come from government. So initially money would do something for them, but that will not be, that will be just for maybe three, four months. Yeah. After that, how long they can They're be in tent, tarpaulins. They can be in tarpaulins for maybe one month, two months, but beyond that, it's very unhuman for anyone to live there. Uh, what about the uh, corporate funding and the other things? Uh, uh, what is there that uh, damage done to the? Is there any industry, uh, real uh, large industry like that uh, from foreign industry, foreign investment industry? Uh, uh, what is their role in their uh, the environmental question? There has not been any uh, foreign direct investment in any of the environment, but. Uh, we can take example of earthquake where we had lots of disaster uh, capitalism like big uh, INGOs are bringing lots of uh, money and like being a tourist and then going to the impacted area that has been uh, the case uh, that's been observed in Nepal. Mm -hmm. Tourism is a main... Uh... Mean disaster tourism means you go to, uh, to give uh, one packet, one packet, 20 packet of biscuit and 20 packet of YY and then you just take photos, so that will not solve the problem because I know it should be something, it's, they should give them proper food, yeah. rice, dal, because that's, uh, because everyone needs a full diet. Yeah. So because that's uh, what, that's uh, tourism, uh, disaster tourism, and then in the name of these pure, poor people, like the disaster capitalism, like they bring uh, lots of money that has been uh, cases uh, during the earthquake. Any other uh, Any other still? which you want to tell or way forward? Is it something like way forward? <laughs> so uh, as I told earlier, like we are in crisis and lots of uh, uh, people-led movement, lots of uh, peasant group, uh, women's group have been uh, demanding for climate emergency and demanding uh, climate uh, justice and also demanding no investment in uh, fossil fuel from these larger countries. So we need to demand uh, from uh, these uh, large, like uh, developed and industrialized countries to solve this crisis. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's fine? fine. Yeah, that's fine.